Welcome back aboard U80. It's March 26th. Uh, recorded to 9 in the morning. We are uh, an equal distance from Cape St. Vincent in Portugal and the, the African coast, which is about, uh, both are about 290 kilometers away. Cape St. Vincent is to our north uh, east, which would be pretty much over our stern and the African coast is over there to our south uh, southeast. Um, our heading is 196 degrees and our speed is 13 knots thereabout. Weather is unchanged and fuel is down to about 60 percent and uh, in about 20 minutes we'll turn north for the third leg of our Search pattern, we have scanned about uh, one-sixth of the moving grid square that we're interested in. And so far, nothing. But I'm excited for the upcoming daylight. Uh, that should help us with uh, the spotting during the day. So I'm still confident that uh, We'll soon find our target. It looks like the wave uh, height has increased a bit, so let me see if we can get a weather report. Uh, we actually need our spotter back up. It just came up from a dive. Let's see what we get. Nope, weather is unchanged. Um, we have pretty much maximum efficiency in all compartments. Either we have a guy? No. Not really. Um, yep, so uh, that's what's happening currently. Um, maybe one little thing actually. I. Um, Gave, uh, in the last episode, I gave the impression that we might miss a bit uh, from our grid square in this in the north uh, western corner. But actually, we don't with our with the search pattern that we worked out. We 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 made sure we scanned every bit of the, the twenty. Uh, let's see, one sixth. That's about sixteen uh, percent, roughly. Of the the sixteen percent that we uh, the sixteen western percent of the grid square that we scanned uh, we, we scanned all of that so we didn't miss anything and we're not going to miss anything for some reason my calculations gave me a bit of a flatter a bit of a more western course for the um, let's see we're on the second leg the third leg starts in 40 minutes um, yeah for some reason we're heading a bit more westerly than, than before I think the first leg was 18 degrees and this leg now is only 16 degrees deviating from north south so I don't know I think it has to do with some adjustments I made I mean the, 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 those are all Appro geometric approximations. I, I, I draw the line and then I calculate with the time given. I calculate how far the grid is moving and then I calculate back eastwards how much I want to leave. So um, I think that's why we get slight um, differences in in, uh, in our headings from time to time. Anyway, uh, that's um, what we're currently up to and uh, I'll be back hopefully during the day with news about the convoy. We are uh, on one of our scheduled uh, hydrogen checks. And I think I can hear the destroyer at uh, 70 degrees to port. I'm not sure you can, you'll be able to hear it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I hear. Yeah. yeah. 
there is definitely there's definitely a sound. 65 degrees. So uh, yeah, we're on the third leg, and that's pretty much uh, w where we should have expected the convoy. The regular convoy route said about this uh, latitude, according to the map. It wasn't likely that we would find it down here. Anyway, um, let's slap down plotting, and then I think it uh, means battle stations. Now I don't know how far that is, but I'm going to assume it's... We'll go with uh, 20 kilometers, since I only can hear one ship. So that to put them about 15 kilometers to our east, roughly. But we should uh, actually soon be able to see them. If I don't know, I mean, we could be off, but we should be able to see them. I think we're gonna yeah, we're gonna stay on course. We're just gonna go. See we go, but uh, yeah, we're gonna let's make sure. Yeah, I think there is something. So um, let's surf. Uh, let's. Actually, be cautious. Let's take a look through the observation. I do go up to the conning tower myself from time to time, but um, I I didn't uh, just before we dove. I usually went uh, uh, like in the in the in the middle between. Two dives. I would usually go to the bridge for about 10-15 minutes. Um, so I don't know what exactly was out there before we go. Oh, what I heard was over here. Yeah, we can't, can't see anything this way. Uh, Go back, take another. It's hard to tell. Yeah, we have to um, get up um, surface and um, I think we'll go straight north. So I suppose that the convoy is somewhere in this uh, strip. The thing is, it's kind of hard to tell um, It's kind of hard to tell oh, We should come down It's kind of hard to tell How far away From how far away we can hear them, but uh, my experience is that 
the faintest signals are about 20 kilometers away. So just before we were going about at about 3.38 and now we're uh, going, uh, we have to finish the turn, we're going north before we saw them at 7, or we heard the signal at about 70, that means 70 minus 22, that would be roughly at uh, 50 degrees, which should be we're expecting. 50 degrees off the port, uh, slowly wandering this way. Uh, to so, uh, 50 degrees off to starboard, obviously. Um, yeah, I think we're going to race north. We'll certainly dive again once we get into the strip. Uh, latest w when we get into this uh, strip again, I want to take a listen and um, get, uh, provided we haven't uh, optically, visually uh, identified the target. And that's uh, certainly the latest, uh, and I'll be back with you. We're approaching. The strip, it's about 20 minutes past uh, our first uh, contact and I have turned, we're heading 15 degrees now, so I've turned a bit into the convoy or the supposed convoy, but I don't want to really get caught right in front of them, so we're going to dive right now and uh, update our signal. Jawohl, Herr Kaloyn. There's no visual uh, acquisition so far. Well, I, I want to know uh, whereabout we stand in, in relation to that uh, the contact that we got 20 minutes ago. I've also ordered the uh, weapons officer to stations. message okay. uh, let's see mm, there was something here Still very faint, so we can, I think we can move. Yeah. Another phone operator picked it up. We have to. They're approaching here. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy, normaler Antrieb. 
we'll uh, slow down immediately once we identify the target. And then we'll stay on the south side. I did get an updated weather report. Uh, the wind speed has increased by one meter per second. Uh, the direction is 80 degrees now. So it's just a general piece of information. I'm not sure how it's relevant. Well, I mean, we don't want to be sailing against it, I guess, because then uh, we would have uh, higher splashes. And another thing is that the lookouts uh, don't usually perform as well those that are facing into the wind on, on our targets. So um, it would be nice to stay in front of the convoy, I guess. Holy smokes, what is this? I had dark spots on my green. I saw dark spots over here in the sky. And uh, I thought it looked like uh, anti-air fire, but uh, I think it was a, just a graphical glitch. I don't know if they're going to be visible on, on the video capture, but um, there were uh, three dark dark spots in a in a row, and then they disappeared and reappeared a couple of times. Um, a UFO sighting, I guess, of some sort. But um, that's not our main concern right now. Our main concern is the convoy which should appear shortly this way. Let's actually uh, go north again. We don't want to get uh, any closer to the convoy. We want to get in front of it. Uh, we don't want to race past it, that's for sure. We want to pick it up visually and then turn west. Well, somehow we also have to uh, get into target prioritization. Prioritization. Um, but we will have to race along the convoy somehow. I guess we have to do the southern pass and the northern pass. I don't think we're going to be attacking during the day. Uh, right now it should be something like 10 past 2 yep, in the afternoon, so that would give us some time to uh, maybe circle or half circle the convoy and uh, identify a couple of targets. Um, that we then can attack at night. I think I see the first smoke plume very faintly here at 40 degrees. There is another smoke plume over here at uh, 55. You probably won't be able to see it on YouTube. But there is one right on the crosshair right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think we are looking good. I assume it's a big smoke plume, but uh, Probably should be the destroyers or the 
the escorts uh, smoke plume because it's the first one that we see or this could be this is a smaller one could be from a smaller ship but a closer one I think I see the silhouette of the hull and pointing towards us Can get interesting. Let's see. Um, how are we doing personnel wise? Okay, we're losing performance here. So I'm gonna switch him out. Bridge. Um, this could be a Schiff gesichtet. Get a sighting. Schiff gesichtet. Are you going to tell me? Which way? Or do I have to bring up the... Jawohl, Herr Kaloin! 62... Yeah, I think this is the escort. Uh, definitely an escort because it's turning. <clears throat> now I see the side of a hole. Now it's I think facing back towards towards the convoy. I think you see the bow wake on the left side. There's another smoke plume here at uh, about 45 degrees. A bunch of smoke plumes here at around 50 degrees. And there at uh, 60 degrees is the escort smoke plume. How do we best it's weird. The smoke boom just faded out of sight. That didn't really fade out of sight, it actually kind of snapped out of sight. As if as if the visibility dropped down. Which is possible. I mean it's possible that the weather is worsening. Let's say uh, some fog, maybe. Maybe we're dealing with deteriorating visibility. Yes, yes, I know. He's uh, worried about the escort. But So, target acquisition, target prioritization. Um, one possibility would be to find the center or the front and somewhat the center of the convoy and submerge and basically let ourselves uh, fall into it. 
uh, maybe at uh, silent running. You don't actually have to make a lot of uh, speed. And then just poke out with the periscope and see what's around. And then once we, once we are behind the convoy, we could uh, resurface and overtake again. And I think that is uh, what I want to do. Seven thousand four hundred meters, that is quite close. So let's um go under. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin, zero tiefe. And then we'll turn east or east northeast. We'll use the hydrophone and we'll try to find um we'll try to find the center of the convoy. So Go down to about. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy, große Fahrt voraus. Half ahead. I mean, we have a full battery, more or less. That's fine. And uh, Jawohl, Herr Kaloy, longer in a bit. So we're going to use uh, the hydro phone and the observation scope uh, sparingly though the latter the screens are usually about I'd say about two to three kilometers or between one and three kilometers ahead of the main convoy so I don't know seven and a half kilometers that would mean that the front of the convoy is about here uh, 10 kilometers and this green was over this way I think somewhere over here uh, we have two obviously There is one to our starboard, and then there is one more or less in front of us. Well, I'm going to uh, try to fall into the convoy, like slowly this way uh, towards the east. And I'm going to try to identify a couple of uh, worthy targets and I'll be back once I have an update. Thanks for checking in. So um, we're seeing really the ships now of the convoy which is back here. Um, it uh, does actually look quite large. I think there are a few tankers and there's definitely a troop transport we have a we have company here. We have to be a bit careful. 
and we have some other company back here somewhere. Yep, there's another escort. And um, I think I botched it up a little bit by... This is the bearing of the, of the port most ship of the convoy and of the starboard most ship so if we assume that a convoy is about the ships are usually about 500 meters apart from each other and how many rows do we have maybe Maybe four or five rows. Let's go with four. We would have two kilometers. That means the convoy is about here. And we are not really in front of it. The center would then be roughly around here. And now that we're underwater at seven knots, we're never going to get here without draining our batteries. We used up 5% just on this little stretch here going at uh, 7 knots. So I think um, we have to I think we can, we'll do this, we'll do the following. We'll uh, go north. We'll get really close to what we think is the, the southern edge of the convoy. And then we'll we'll turn west. We'll be heading. We'll still be heading west, but we'll drop down to maybe four knots or so, or three knots, while submerged. And then we'll just scan the convoy from from the uh, southern side. Uh, now we're off the. Approaching uh, the escort, but we have him head on, so we shouldn't easily be able to hear our propellers, I think. We have to see how big he is. Uh, maybe oh, let's drop down to half speed. So this is the plan, then we'll have at least some information about the ships in the convoy from, from the southern side. And then, I mean, we have a lot of time now. We still have daylight left for about, let's say, for about four hours. And that should be enough to scan the southern side. And then maybe we can do one attack or two attacks from the south. And... Um, during the night, and then we'll see what happens uh, during during the next day. Maybe we can then circle around and attack the next the following night from the north. I'm also going to. Where is he? Nice so far. Um. Yeah, we're also going to give an, uh, we'll send a status report. So now we cannot, 
so we're submerged. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what's going to happen. We're going to fall behind the convoy on the southern flank and then... Uh, oh, now he's really close. Let's... Uh, Slow down and turn west. I'll uh, keep you posted, obviously, and uh, but uh, during the next episode, it's a good time to stop. Thanks for checking in, and see you in a bit.